all of the TRT clinics out there, you know what you need to do. Instead of prescribing testosterone replacement therapy, all you need is one pack of Melboro, and all of these guys are out of their subclinical state. They're no longer hypogonadal. Vigor Steve here. So you might have heard Andrew Tate's claims that his serum testosterone levels are that high because of the 20 cigars that he smokes every single day, besides the 25 cups of coffee that he has on a daily basis. These statements are wild and very far out there. You would basically need to smoke a cigar every 45 minutes or drink a cup of coffee every 30 to 40 minutes of your waking hour. It's doable though, don't get me wrong, but you're basically smoking cigars and drinking coffee the entire way through. And it will be very hard to fall asleep with all that nicotine and caffeine in your bloodstream. So these statements made me raise an eyebrow, actually bilaterally, both eyebrows were raised, but I'm also intrigued because I'm quite the connoisseur of exogenous testosterone and a cigar aficionado, but any way I can find to increase my endogenous testosterone production while off cycle, I'm going to look into it, right? So I did all of the research so you don't have to, and the evidence is compelling. It appears that smoking nicotine can actually increase total testosterone and free testosterone concentrations in men in about 50% of the cases. But for the scope of this video, we're only going to focus on the evidence, which is actually proving that total testosterone and free testosterone and some of the other sex hormone and endocrine markers are higher in smokers compared to non-smokers. The only problem here is, is that all of the scientific evidence have been performed on cigarette smokers, not on cigar smokers. There's a bit of a difference here because cigarettes you inhale into the lungs and absorb the nicotine and some of the metabolites that way. And with smoking cigars, the nicotine absorption is solely sublingual. Don't, for the life of you, start inhaling cigar smoke. You'll be coughing up a lung. It's a very unpleasant experience. Now, there's a huge overlap, though, between cigarettes and cigars because both are made from tobacco. So we're going to extrapolate from the scientific evidence, even though all of the scientific evidence have been performed on cigarette smoking and not cigar smoking. Again, 50% of the casings, there's about an equal amount of scientific evidence that shows that cigarette smoking or nicotine or some of the metabolites have no real positive effect on total testosterone levels, um, but about half of it, which we're going to use in this video, is actually very compelling. Before we get into it, please like the video, leave a comment video with them, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by joining either the YouTube or Patreon memberships, where you can vote for upcoming deep dives or join the weekly vigorous Q&A, which is always on Saturday, so you can get your questions answered privately before we go public and then turns into a super chat, super flood. So let's go all the way back to October 1988 to a study performed by Das et al. titled Cigarette Smoking and Serum Sex Hormones in Men. This study with a total of 284 male participants follow, were followed for four years at the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania MRFIT Center, and it showed that serum total and free testosterone concentrations were positively correlated with cigarette smoking among the longitudinal sample and the controls. So over four years, a lot of um, measurements were taken amongst the 284 males, showing that total and free testosterone levels were significantly higher compared to the men who weren't smoking. This positive correlation was also independent of age, relative body weight, alcohol drinking, consumption, blood pressure, and HDL cholesterol. There was no association between either serum estradiol or estrone concentrations and cigarette smoking in this population. We do know that nicotine, cotinine, and anabasine, metabolites found in tobacco or occur within the body after ingesting nicotine, those inhibit various steps, various enzymes, in the overall steroid hormone cascade. And whether that's before testosterone is actually synthesized from cholesterol or further down the line, preventing metabolism of testosterone into dihydrotestosterone or estradiol, actually inhibiting the breakdown of testosterone and some of the other androgens, um, that is actually very well documented. There could be a whole separate video in itself. So let me know down below if you would like to see that, because there's clear clinical evidence that nicotine inhibits aromatized enzyme activity within the brain. And all three metabolites, nicotine, cotinine, and anabasine, actually inhibit aromatized enzyme activity within the uterus and various forms of cancer, and perhaps other tissues of the body as well. So let me know if you would like to see a separate video for that. I don't want anybody to start using nicotine 
for the purpose of inhibiting one's aromatized enzymes in order to get lean or deal with some of the metabolism of testosterone in the estradiol. Oh, and before we continue, keep in mind that body weight, the body mass index, is inversely correlated with serum testosterone levels. So the higher body fat or body mass index that you have, the lower your serum testosterone levels are going to be. Some of these studies are going to show that there's a correlation between body mass index, nicotine, and testosterone levels. Low body mass index, uh, nicotine intake, obviously, at various cigarettes per day, showing that testosterone levels are higher. And then there's an inverse correlation where body mass index is higher, but there's no smoking in place, probably because nicotine is such a potent appetite suppressant. So you smoke, you have low body mass index, you don't smoke, you have high body mass index, in which case the testosterone level is also low. So keep that in mind going forward. There's a little bit of a uh, caveat when interpreting this scientific evidence. And this statement is kind of confirmed in a study performed in 1989. So only a couple months later, performed by Michael et al. titled Relationship Between Body Mass Index, Cigarette Smoking, and Plasma Sex Hormones in Normal Male Twins. So here they analyzed 159 adult male twins to see what their body mass index, their serum concentrations of sex hormones, and if there's a correlation there. Now, some of the twins were both smoking. In some instances, one twin was smoking and the other one was not. And other twins, both of them were not smoking. So again, there's a little bit of an overlap for body mass index and sex hormone concentrations in relation to smoking or non-smoking individuals in twin pairs. And the results show that body mass index significantly affected sex hormone binding globulin, where smoking had no effect. So unfortunately, we can't use smoking, whether that's cigarettes or cigars, extrapolating a little bit here, to control our sex hormone binding globulin levels. If they're too high, nicotine is not going to have any effect. And if they're too low, nicotine is not going to have an effect either. You would still need to use something like proviron, boron, or selective estrogen receptor modulators to kind of modulate that. The results also show that the plasma contents of testosterone and dihydrotestosterone and the luteinizing hormone to testosterone ratio were affected by both body mass index and smoking. Although, after allowing for body mass index, smoking was less significant. So this study shows on all of these twins that body mass index is more indicative of serum testosterone levels, and in this case, testosterone and luteinizing hormone levels, compared to smoking. The analysis suggested that the smoking effect on sex hormones, except perhaps for testosterone, is secondary, secondary, guys, so not primary, secondary to the effects on body mass index. Very interesting results. If you go further down in the literature, you see that some of these results are actually replicated or kind of disproven where smoking is a clear and sole primary driver of total testosterone, free testosterone, and some of the other sex hormones which they're investigating. For example, a study performed in November of 1994 by Field et al. titled The Relation of Smoking, Age, Relative Weights, and dietary intake to serum adrenal steroids, sex hormones, and sex hormone binding globulin levels in middle-aged men. So this study, they actually tracked protein intake, fat intake, carbohydrate intake, a mineral intake, vitamin intake. So all of the micronutrients and the micronutrients were investigated and uh, tracked and compared to smoking age, relative body weight, and the overall hormone levels within the body. A very interesting study. Again, all of the references and citations are down below in case you're interested. This study took 1,241 randomly sampled middle-aged men from the United States compared with non-smokers and independent of relative uh, body mass index and age, cigarette smokers had an increased serum level of DHEA, 18% higher, DHEA sulfate, 13% higher, cortisol, 5% higher, so that's something you definitely don't want, androstenedione, 33% higher, testosterone, 9% higher, DHD, dihydrotestosterone, 14% higher, and SHBG, 8% higher. So among these 1,241 middle-aged dudes from the United States, only the smokers had high sex hormone and adrenal levels. Androstenedione, total plasma testosterone, albumin-bound testosterone, that's freely, so that's bound to SHBG, dihydrotestosterone and SHBG decreased with increasing body mass index. Again, we've mentioned this several times already. The data suggested that serum adrenal steroids and sexual hormone concentrations in middle-aged men are more influenced by cigarette smoking, age, no brainer here, we already did a video about that, I'll link it at the end of this one, and obesity rather 
then dietary intake. So everything that I tried to talk about here on this YouTube channel is now kind of forfeit. Um, all the micronutrients that I usually talk about, zinc, selenium, taurine, carnitine, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Apparently, based on a study from 1994, maybe they didn't have as good of a selection of multivitamins, vitamins, minerals, et cetera. Um, apparently, it doesn't have any effect on your sex hormones or adrenal levels in serum. Um, so yeah, uh, take this study for what it is. Uh, if you want to have high DHEA, DHEA sulfate, testosterone, etc., cetera, um, smoking <laughs> seems to be the way to go. And of course, not getting yourself morbidly obese, that's certainly deleterious for your hormone levels. Moving on to another study from June 2001, performed by English et al. titled, Effects of Cigarette Smoking on Levels of Bioavailable Testosterone in Healthy Men. This study, a case control study of 25 healthy male smokers versus 25 healthy never smokers, so never even touched a cigarette in their younger years, succumbing to peer pressure. Trust me, I've been there. I used to smoke cigarettes during parties here and there, maybe once a month, once every couple of months um, to kind of take the edge off the other stuff that I was doing. Um, you know, let's just omit that from this video. Um, these uh, healthy male smokers and healthy never smokers were matched by age and again, body mass index. The levels of total and free testosterone were found to be higher in smokers compared to non-smokers, respectively, <laughs> as was sex hormone binding globulin levels. There were no significant differences in the level of bioavailable testosterone or 17 beta estradiol levels between smokers and non-smokers. So maybe now, um, already this uh, story of uh, the potential for aromatized inhibition of nicotine, cotinine, or anabasine is kind of falling out of the water, right? Maybe only the scientific evidence has been proven in women under particular medical conditions, but we can do a deep dive. All you have to do is ask for it. Very interesting study. And again, you know, these clear changes in testosterone levels just gets repeated and repeated and repeated with the studies that I selected. Again, I omitted all the studies where it showed there was no changes in serum concentrations. Anyway, moving over to another study published in the September to December edition of Aging Men of 2005, performed by Ponholzer et al., titled Relationship Between Testosterone, Serum Levels, and Lifestyle in Aging Men. Here we go again. Of a total of 375 men between 45 to 85 years old, 25.4% had hypogonadal testosterone levels, so those are subclinical, below, what was it, 200-something nanograms per deciliter. Smokers had higher testosterone and free testosterone levels. So even though 25% uh, of the men in this study were hypogonadal, of all the smokers compared to the non-smokers, at least the smokers were winning and a little bit ahead in their serum concentrations. While body mass index, again, had a negative correlation with testosterone. Moving over to another study. I'm going to recite all the studies, guys, until you get sick of it. June 2002, a study performed by Trummer et al. titled The Impact of Cigarette Smoking on Human Semen Parameters and Hormones. This study took 1,104 men, of which were 517 non-smokers, 109 ex-smokers, so at least they threw in the towel already, and 478 currently smokers. So let's just split it right down the middle. About 500 people who used to dabble with that their anabolic tobacco and a little bit over 500 people who never dabbled, right? All had infertility for at least one year. They were all evaluated. Smokers were significantly younger, had increased free and total testosterone levels, but decreased prolactin levels. Does this mean that tobacco, nicotine, cotinine, anabasine, or some of the other metabolites found in cigarettes have some dopaminergic effects? Or... Does this mean the correlation between smokers and lower body mass index? That's the sole reason why their prolactin levels are lower. Or is, is it because the smokers are significantly younger, right? I mean, there's a positive correlation between body mass index and serum prolactin levels. The higher your body mass index is, generally speaking, in a general population, the prolactin levels might be a little bit higher as well. Keep that in mind. Testosterone levels were significantly lower in those who were able to stop or reduce smoking. So the more cigarettes you smoke, allegedly, the higher serum testosterone levels are going to be. And some of the previous studies that I mentioned also prove this. If you want to know about how uh, smoking versus non-smoking affects your fertility levels, read this study, very interesting results. Again, everything is down below in the description section. And this is actually confirmed in a study from June 2007, performed by Schwarzberg et al, titled Affiliations, Endogenous Testosterone Levels and Smoking 
in men. This study took 3,427 men participating in the fifth Tromso study. Smoking men had significantly higher levels of total and free testosterone compared to men who had never smoked. Both total and free testosterone levels increased significantly with increasing numbers of cigarettes smoked daily. Interesting. Smoking men had 15% higher total and 13% higher free testosterone levels compared to men who never smoked. Thus, smoking seems to be an important compounding factor when evaluating testosterone levels and could possibly mask borderline hypogonadism. All of the TRT clinics out there, you know what you need to do. Instead of prescribing testosterone replacement therapy, all you need is one pack of Melboro, and all of these guys are out of their subclinical state. They're no longer hypogonadal. All you need to do is maybe go with, uh, you know, Galois from France. That's probably the most potent tobacco, the most flavorful tobacco that I used to smoke when I was younger during parties. Um, I would say that that's a tobacco replacement therapy instead of testosterone replacement therapy going from hypogonadal states to within the reference range. <laughs> Dude, you don't even need a script for it because cigars, cigarettes, tobacco in general is sold worldwide over the counter, albeit that prices have gone up quite steeply over the last couple of months. I know that I'm spending about two to three times or even four times as much for my Cuban cigars currently, right? So maybe testosterone replacement therapy, if you're going for daily administrations of uh, cigarettes versus testosterone, testosterone replacement therapy might be cheaper, but you have to get it on the script or source it on the gray area market. Whereas cigarettes, you can just buy anywhere. All you need to go is to the grocery store, drop a couple dollars, and you got your pack that should be able to increase your total testosterone concentrations quite the same. No, 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 that's not true. At least with testosterone replacement therapy, you can get out of the reference range. With cigarettes, good luck trying to get anywhere close to the top of the reference range from the studies that we analyzed previously. Anywhere between 9 to 15% increase is to be expected, I would say, for heavy smokers. Um, so if you want to go super physiological, TRT is the way to go, baby. And then the last study I want to highlight, finally, the last study, no more overlays. My editor is already having a nightmare about this video. This was published in Hormones, the October to December edition of 2013, performed by Wang et al. titled Cigarette Smoking Has a Positive and Independent Effect on Testosterone Levels. They took the data of 2021 men, 989 were non-smokers and 1,032 were smokers, aged 20 to 69, so men in the prime of their lives. Um, smokers had significant higher total testosterone and free testosterone levels yet again, compared to non-smokers, even after stratification per age, body mass index, serum triglyceride levels, and alcohol consumption. So it's independent of, uh, again, age, body mass index, even though previous studies showed a correlation between body mass index, testosterone levels, and uh, smokers or non-smokers, right? So again, there's a little bit of overlap depending on which study you read. A body mass index might have a significant effect on serum testosterone levels or, and, <laughs> smoking might have a significant effect also. Now, I will say this, and this is very important to emphasize, besides the correlation between smoking and testosterone or vice versa, higher testosterone levels leading to more likely outcome of smoking, it's the same for higher testosterone levels and a more likely outcome to get addicted to gambling or get addicted to sex or get addicted to recreational drugs or become sexually deviant, right? Higher testosterone levels can cause all kinds of issues. So maybe based on the data that we just researched and reviewed, I would say that it's not a correlation that smokers have higher testosterone levels. I think that higher testosterone level individuals are more likely to smoke, right? And because their body mass index is lower because nicotine is suppressing their appetites, Another positive effect on total testosterone level, by keeping their body weight levels lower, their aromatized enzyme expression is lower, there's less likely effect of testosterone converting into estradiol, and thus serum testosterone levels stay higher. You can see that in a lot of scientific evidence where people stop smoking, where their testosterone levels are going down. I'll link all of those studies down below. And to further emphasize another study from October 1989, Remember when I said I wasn't going to post any more studies? I lied. Performed by Bauman et al. Testosterone and Cigarette Smoking in Early Adolescence, published in the Journal of Behavioral Medicine. In this study, salivary testosterone was positively associated with cigarette smoking 
among 201 subjects aged 12 to 14 years old. This is the prime time of your life when serum testosterone levels are sky high and you don't know what to do with it um, because it's a little bit too young to reproduce, albeit I know that there's some 14 year olds out there that already um, right, punched their nookie cards. I mean, most guys would have to go on testosterone replacement therapy to get anywhere close to the total testosterone levels of these 12 to 14 year olds. The finding suggests that testosterone should be included in future considerations of adolescent cigarette smoking. And I found something very interesting in the results of this study. If physical development is determinant of cigarette smoking, so the more of a stature you have at that age, it's probably more likely that you start smoking as well. Or maybe you're rolling with the older kids, they're all smoking, so you start smoking even though you're only 12 years old. Then the strength of the relationship between testosterone and smoking shown in table one could have been inappropriately reduced by the control for age. So again, irrespective of age, the more um, muscular, the taller, the more physical appearance these kids might have. If that leads to smoking more readily, maybe it has nothing to do with age. Maybe it has more to do with testosterone levels. We could conceptualize cigarette smoking as an indicator of the more general construct, social deviance. I mean, how many of us were socially deviant when we were 12 to 14 years old? maybe even leading up to 18 years old, right? We just don't do what our parents want to do or the teacher wants us to do or anybody else of society wants us to do because our testosterone levels are so high, we don't listen to anybody. I mean, how many people on TRT are very compliant? Like I mentioned, in the serum testosterone levels are declining um, since uh, the ancient man up until now. If testosterone has a causal influence on social deviance, <laughs> here we go. Then we should, and then we would have overcontrolled when adjusting for social deviance and examining the relationship between testosterone and cigarette smoking. These conceptual and analytical considerations suggest that our estimates in the association between testosterone and smoking could be conservative. Yeah, yeah, very, very interesting. I would like to see a study performed on a very a large selection of men. Um, seeing if their testosterone levels are higher, um, analyzing that versus whether they smoke or not, and then see what happens when they stop smoking, which again, many of the studies show that as soon as you stop smoking, the longer you stop smoking, the lower your testosterone levels are. Also because again, body mass index tend to go up when you stop smoking. So maybe a better comparison would be seeing where the total testosterone levels, free testosterone and all of the other hormone markers are in comparison to smoking or some of the appetite suppressants like liraglutide, dulaglutide, semiglutide, terzepidide, and that new compound that is coming out in a couple months, which is going to agonize the GLP-1, the GIP, and the glucagon receptor. So that experiment that I did with terzepidide, combining terzepidide with glucagon, now is going to be combined into a single product. With these appetite suppressants, body mass index should be relatively low. And then I want to see if there's a correlation between total testosterone levels in these individuals as well, assuming that they start out healthily and not in a you know, pre-diabetic or full-blown type 2 diabetic state, which is ultimately what these medications are prescribed for. So again, this is a lot of scientific evidence that shows that uh, smoking, whether that is uh, cigarettes or other tobacco products, can actually uh, increase total testosterone levels. Does this mean that you have to start smoking? No, of course not, because I don't think that this evidence is very compelling. Again, I just cherry picked about half of the evidence that I could find where um, cigarette smoking indeed increased total testosterone levels. And then when you start doing more research, you see that smoking cessation, testosterone levels go down. But when they start administering something like nicotine gum at non-smokers, testosterone levels also go down. An acute effect of nicotine is that testosterone levels actually go down, but maybe with prolonged exposure, again, body mass index goes down and then total testosterone levels go up. There's no real longitudinal data what happens when you introduce nicotine and follow people for five years because that's probably unethical because nicotine is so addictive and comes uh, with a longer list of side effects, but also potential benefits, depending on the route of nicotine administration that you go for. I think that cigarette smoking is uh, very deleterious for the health of your lungs and other organs because you potentially had so much oxidative stress. Uh, cigar smoking is a little bit less, albeit that you know a lot of people still get, um, what is it, throat cancer or uh, thyroid cancer or mouth cancer, tongue cancer, etc. 
with um you know frequent cigar smoking so i would recommend everybody out there not to smoke 20 cigars per day like andrew tate suggested or um you know insinuated that that's the reason for his total testosterone levels being so high um if i look at andrew tate i would say trt but he claims that is completely natural but i mean how many of these influencers are um, you know forthcoming with their testosterone replacement therapy or full-blown steroid use um you know on social media not too many unfortunately okay i'll leave it here guys food for thoughts i hope you found this interesting you can find everything that i'm associated with down below in the youtube description section follow me on instagram and tiktok at vigor steve a cigar smoking aficionado front double bicep for the vigorous crew i mean imagine if you could look like that just by smoking some cigars every single day i mean i can't stop flexing and the last time i had a cigar was about two weeks ago let's see what happens if i abstain from cigars for another two months maybe i go completely catabolic if i'm missing out on the anabolic tobacco replacement therapy <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video